Do, 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 do. <laughs> nope, one day I'll find a new intro. Good morning, Reptilians. Welcome and welcome back to the channel. Just heads up in advance, I decided to do this on the 1st of July at nighttime. And so for the next few days, all my neighbors are going to be shooting off fireworks nonstop. So if you hear explosions in the background, it's just that time of year, I guess. This week, we are doing a video all about things that I have learned, opinions that have changed while keeping reptiles. So this isn't necessarily videos like I've done in the past where it's like mistakes that I've made because these aren't necessarily mistakes. They're just opinions that I had at one point that have now changed. The reason I'm doing this video is because occasionally you may be watching a video and I may say something in a video from two years ago and then say something different in a video from a week ago. And most of the time, that's just because reptile care changes changes and that's okay. We should learn and grow with information as it becomes available. Before we get started, this video is sponsored by The Doobie Dude, so make sure to stay until the end of the video to find out how you can save 10% off of your entire order at thedoobiedoo.com. Let's get started. So the first one on this list is no loose substrate. So for a very long time when I would make care videos, when I first started, this was three years ago, over three years ago, I was always very hardcore. I don't believe in loose substrates. I think in those early videos, I would say things like, if you want to use loose substrate, you can, but like, I don't believe in loose substrate. <laughs> My opinion of that has drastically changed. I still don't believe in calcium sand. Don't get me wrong there. Still don't believe you should use calcium sand. My opinion widely changed for that over a small amount of time. So the first step was getting a crested gecko. Crested geckos do so much better on loose substrate than they do on things like paper towels because it holds humidity. They love bioactive tanks. And I realized how much crested geckos loved being in more natural to their habitat situations. And so I kind of started to think about other animals and if they would also enjoy being in environments that were more natural to their habitats. So eventually I started looking into arid bioactive setups and I moved my leopard gecko to a bioactive enclosure. She was so much happier in that enclosure than she was on tile. Now, eventually that didn't work out for her. All of her plants kept dying her water dish kept being full of mud and she eventually ended up yanking off her own tail and I couldn't get to her and there was a whole bunch of panic. So now she has a one third of her tank digging area with loose substrate and the rest is tile. That way I can get to her if I need to. Her water bowl doesn't stay muddy and her plants are alive because they're fake. <laughs> but eventually I would love to go back bioactive for both my leopard geckos because bioactive tanks are fantastic. It encourages so much enrichment, so much natural behaviors like digging and things like that. And because of things that you guys have pointed out to me about tile and possible joint health issues, things like that, I'm actually considered going bioactive for Zaz and getting rid of the tile. So my thought process on the whole loose substrate situation has changed drastically thanks to bioactive tanks. Next up is leopard gecko UVB lighting. When I very first started with all this, UVB lighting was not recommended for leopard geckos. It was even resources out there that said that lighting for leopard geckos, especially albino leopard geckos, could cause them a lot of pain and discomfort and you shouldn't put lights at all in your leopard geckos tank. On top of Perseus's tank is just a very small UVB bulb. I know using UVB is debated since he's nocturnal, but he doesn't seem to mind it at all and I guess there are some good benefits to it. Three years is a long time in the reptile community and that opinion has greatly changed across the board and with my own pro thought processes. So when I first started making leopard gecko care guides, I would always say that they do not need any kind of light. They just need to know their day and light cycle and all that jazz. But my thought process on that has changed. I have two leopard geckos. Both of them have UVB lighting and I really feel like it makes a difference. These guys are crepuscular, not nocturnal. That was another big debate in the reptile community when I very first got my leopard geckos. Are they nocturnal? Are they crepuscular? And the consensus is now they are crepuscular and that they are getting access to UVB light in those early morning hours, those late afternoon, evening hours. I am not and have never been the you shouldn't do these things you should only do this one way and that's why when I do care guides and stuff I try to show lots of different ways to do things but I think that the benefits of UVB lighting for leopard geckos are clearly there so I definitely recommend giving your leopard gecko UVB light 
Next on the list is my opinion on beginner reptiles. So again, when I first started all this, I was very, these are super easy beginner reptiles. These are reptiles that you should start with. If you're just not getting into reptiles, these are easy beginner reptiles. So if you're watching this video, the odds are that you're about to get your first reptile and you are researching which reptiles are the best for beginners. But today I want to talk about the top five reptiles that are best for beginners and also my opinion on that has changed. I, for the most part, feel like most reptiles can be beginner reptiles. The best beginner reptile is the reptile that you want. Most reptiles live a very long time and you're making a commitment to that animal that you're going to care for it for its whole life when you're getting it. So it's best to get whatever it is you want. I feel like it's much worse to start off with a leopard gecko because someone told you that you needed a leopard gecko as opposed to starting off with an ocelot gecko because that's your dream gecko. Now there are some exceptions of this and I do make comments about this in my best reptiles for small tanks video from a couple weeks ago. I made a comment about the electric blue day gecko. The reason for that is simply just because it's very very difficult to take care of other than a very small handful of things that that are just insane to take care of. Unless you have a good understanding of humidity and temperatures and how those things affect each other and plants and taking care of plants and tanks, except for those handful of animals that are like that, that are very specific like that, I feel like most animals can be beginner reptiles if you are willing to put in the research. You have probably heard me say this in multiple videos recently, but in past videos, I definitely made a lot of comments about these are animals that you should start with and things like that. Again, if you want to start with an easy reptile because you want to get your feet wet in the world of reptiles, go for it. But just don't ever feel forced to start with a certain animal because so-and-so said to. Do what makes you happy. The next one is the usage of kale for bearded dragons. So in the very, very beginning, we've talked about this one multiple times, so I'm just gonna quickly go over it, especially since I spent 10 minutes on bioactive tanks. Kale for bearded dragons is what I fed my bearded dragon when I very first got her. It's what the pet shop that sold her to me fed her, and it's what I fed her. Right here, usually it just consists of kale, some kind of greens, turnip greens, mustard greens, collard greens, even though she doesn't care for any of those very much. This is always a wishy-washy back and forth argument anytime I bring this up, but I no longer think that kale is a good staple green to feed your bearded dragon, and I no longer feed her kale as a staple green. I know that there's going to be people in the comments that say kale is good for bearded dragons. Words, 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 words. I go into a lot of detail about this in the controversial bearded dragon topic video that I did a few weeks ago where I go into detail about the oxalates in kale and how those high oxalates can bind with calcium and cause calcium deficiency in bearded dragons and how in humans that same sort of chemical reaction causes kidney stones and things like that. But I will leave that here if you're looking for more details about that. With kale, you can sprinkle it in every now and then. It's going to be fine. Just don't use it as a staple for your bearded dragon. I just kind of avoid it altogether with Zaz now. And the last one on this list, which is also going to be in that controversial bearded dragon care video, is water bowls in bearded dragon's tank. This opinion that I have has changed multiple times. It has gone back and forth. As you can see, she doesn't have a water bowl because she will not drink from a standing water source. I would highly suggest putting a water dish in your bearded dragon's tank. I do plan on putting a bubbler in her water dish so that she can hopefully see and drink out of her water bowl. Always just take a spray bottle and just mist the tops of their salads and that's going to give them more water. You could also... I've kind of just settled in the middle. Bearded dragon water dishes for those of you who don't know, I'm sure most of you guys do by now. The big debate is whether or not it's okay to have those in the tank. When I very first started with my bearded dragon, I kept a water dish in her tank and I refused to take that water dish out because in my head, bearded dragons have to have water because they're living things. So they have to have water to survive and they're going to go over there and drink that water. And it never caused an issue. It never caused any sorts of humidity issues or anything like that. As I was looking into more and more research about that, there were multiple videos and articles saying bearded dragons don't need water dishes. But I started reading about how it could cause humidity issues and how that could cause respiratory infections and things like that. And that makes sense to me. So I took the water dish out of her tank and then when I moved her to her current DIY hundred and something gallon tank that she's in I put a bubbler in her water dish and a lot of people yelled at me about that so I took the water dish out of her tank and at that point 
I stopped recommending that you have one and just started suggesting that you could have one or you couldn't. It's kind of up to you. My current stance on this is that it is not a cookie cutter situation. Some people's bearded dragons drink out of water dishes and it doesn't affect their humidity. Some people's bearded dragons do not drink out of water dishes, so they don't need it. Some people's water dishes in their tank affect their humidity, in which case it should be taken out. This is one of those situations, in my personal opinion, that you need to look at in your own tank, in your own home, because depending on where you live in the world, the humidity is vastly different. Especially when we start looking at places like Nevada, Arizona, New Mexico, even some parts of Australia where the humidity stays super, super low, those people might benefit from having water bowls in their tank if the humidity is staying too low. So this is not a cookie cutter situation in my opinion. It 100% depends on you and your bearded dragon. And that is my stance on that topic. And that is it. I am hoping that this week's video comes out to be a pretty short video just because I've made several very long videos lately. Hopefully you can take some things away from this. The biggest thing being care changes constantly and we need to constantly be researching and updating ourselves on care requirements for animals. I just learned about the tile substrate thing like a few weeks ago because of you guys, which is awesome. So keep up to date on that care requirement research. As I said at the beginning of this video, this video is sponsored by the Dubia Dude. The Dubia Dude is a wonderful place to get Dubia Roaches for your reptiles, like bearded dragons and leopard geckos and all those super awesome insectivores. Dubia Roaches are my personal favorite stable feeder, even though I know to a lot of people the idea of roaches is super gross and off-putting. Dubia Roaches are just different. <laughs> they aren't gross. They are nothing like the roaches that are sometimes in people's houses. They don't reproduce like crazy, cannot climb smooth surfaces. They don't stink. These guys are a lot healthier than things like crickets and mealworms with a much higher protein content. And because of that, they're a lot more filling. So it takes less of them to actually fill up your reptile and keep them full. There's not really much else to say. I just love Doobie Roaches as a stable feeder. Make sure that if you do order from the doobie you use my code L to save 10% off of that order. Thank you so much to the Doobie Dude for sponsoring this video. As always, if you have not already, please feel free to follow me on my other socials and like, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications every single time I'm on a new video, which is every Sunday and some Wednesdays. I don't think that I've done this one yet. This was Instagram. Shout out is for Rextagram07 for following me on Instagram, going through and liking a whole bunch of my stuff. And this week's subscriber shout out goes to Lemon for commenting on last week's video. Thank you guys both so much. You are the bee's knees. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye. I made very little notes on. <sighs> okay. Aloe vera. <laughs> this stuff I try to show lots of different ways to. I try Aloe to show right here next to me is for. I want to do that. Please hold. I think my dogs are stealing my pizza. Next up is my opinion on. Actually, we will change the battery. Change the batteries. The next one is, ow, plant. If you're interested in all of that, if you're interested in all the bits and pieces of exactly why I don't think Kale is, um, just a quick rundown, Kale has This hurts. <laughs>